joining us. Um, hope you're all safe. I know it's challenging times, and um, but appreciate what y'all do connecting us to our fans, and it really goes a long way for for us as coaches and players. So with that, I will open it up to questions. Hey, Cliff. Uh, so you, I mean, you're out there uh, giving blood today. I'm I'm curious what it's like getting out of the house a little bit. I'm sure you're kind of uh, hunkered down doing a lot of other stuff. But what, what is it like actually getting out of the house and, and doing something for the community? Yeah, it, it's great to, to come to the stadium, um, to see this set up. Uh, so many great volunteers. And, and Michael, as you all know, is first class as an owner. I mean, he always puts uh, community first. And, and you see what he's done setting this thing up in Red Cross. And then our other players stepping up and donating meals and money throughout the community. It just it makes you proud to be a part of this organization. Hey, Cliff, Scott Bordeaux, good to see you. Um, see you. It, it doesn't appear that we're going to have training camp, I mean, uh, you know, OTAs or mini camps. How much does it impact you getting a team ready for the season? What can you do to try to mitigate that? Yeah, Scott, that's, that's a great question. I think that's what we're all working through um, throughout the league. But for us, being in year two, I think goes a long way. We had a lot of continuity with the staff, with players coming back, um, keeping our schemes in place. You'd love to get your hands on them, but but everybody would. And so um, that continuity, I think, will serve us well. We're going to do the Zoom meetings when we're allowed to and, and do every sort of tele-coaching that, that we can come up with. But um, there's nothing like being on the grass, but everybody's dealing with it. So I think the teams that are able to adapt and adjust the best are, are going to be able to have the most success early in the season. Hey, Cliff, it's Josh Weinfuss. How do you expect the whole draft process to go, considering you guys can't be together? Is it going to be a lot of phone calls, text messages? What can you tell us about the process? It'll be that and, and a lot of this. Um, we're able to watch film, you know, I, I think th there are challenges, but it's nothing compared to what the rest of the world is facing and, um, you know, doctors and, and nurses and people working in stores. I mean, this is, you got to keep things in perspective. It's football. So the, there'll be adjustments to be made, but we'll, we'll be able to call and text. And for the most part, we're, we're at our houses watching film and doing the same draft prep we do in our office, just without the, the human interaction. Cliff, do you have, is there any update on the DeAndre Hopkins, David Johnson deal? Have both players completed their physicals? Is there any concern that might not be finalized before the draft? There's not concern. Those aren't official as far as I, I know at this point, but um, we'll get, get it done. I, I, there's obviously the medical field and personnel have much bigger fish to fry at this point, and so it's, it's been slower than it would be, but I, I have no doubts it'll be done before the draft. Hey, Cliff, it's Kyle. Uh, a lot of people talk about best player available uh, for the draft, and obviously coaches and GMs want to do that. And looking at your roster, do you feel like you guys are in good shape uh, with what you did in free agency and, and getting DeAndre to where you really can do that at number eight? Yeah, Kyle, I think when you look at where the roster sits as, a, as opposed to last year, Steve and, and his guys did a tremendous job of, of really filling needs where we feel like we could line up today and, and be a much improved football team um, personnel-wise than, than where we sat last year this time. So it does set the draft up to where we feel like we're free to take the best available pick that, that comes at, at that number eight spot. And, and that, that's a, a tribute to Steve and the job he did this offseason. Cliff, a lot of people are always excited about new players and free agents and trades, but talk about retaining your own players. That was huge. I, I just talked about it um, in regards to not having an off season, not having OTAs to have guys coming back that had a year in the system. They understand it. They understand our culture, what we're trying to be about, um, how we progress through year one to, to bring them back and be able to hit the ground running is exciting. There's a lot of uh, familiar faces that are going to be back and, and in prominent roles. And so uh, I know as a coaching staff, we're, we're thrilled about that. You guys have seemed to uh, have done a nice job of filling a lot of the holes people thought you had in free agency and bringing back players, which would seem to kind of open the door with what you could do in the draft and give you a lot of flexibility. Is that kind of how you guys are looking at it right now, especially with that first pick? No question. We, we want to be able to take who, the, the best player for us at, at number eight that we feel like 
makes us a better team immediately, fits in with our culture, has the, the right character that we want. And um, with this move Steve was able to make, you know, with D-line and, and inside linebacker, outside linebacker, a wide receiver, um, it definitely gives us the opportunity to, to pick the best available player. And, and that's exciting. Cliff, what are you guys still interested in having a two shifty back? To- uh, yeah, AQ, you know, it's, it's still a work in progress. He did a phenomenal job last year, leadership-wise, to step into, to, you know, the, a college offense, if you will, and the way he led that and bought in the tempo and the different things we were doing. I couldn't have been more impressed with him. And so I, I think um, we'll see where that goes. Hey, Cliff, how does your knowledge of prospects and comfort level with them, how has that been impacted by the fact you haven't seen them in person since the combine? Yeah, and I think with technology these days, it feels like it is in person. You know, you have the FaceTimes, you have the Zoom meetings, your your sit down um, meetings just become that. And honestly, a lot of these kids are more comfortable doing that. They're on the FaceTime, you know, twelve hours a day with their friends and people, and and so they're you get the most comfortable version of them on that FaceTime, honestly. And and so um, the the in person workouts, seeing them move around, doing things like that. Obviously, you'd like to do that, but as far as the the sit down component of it, feeling comfortable with the interview process, I feel like you get just as as much um through this type of technology is this a situation where you think people coaches at least will will stick to what they saw on tape compared to not you know maybe falling out of love with these guys after watching them work out and all that stuff yeah i'm sure we'll still overthink it i mean we always tend to do that but um it may it may streamline it a little bit where, where it's more of an efficient process and um you go with what you see on tape luckily we were able to have the combine and, and get to be around some of those guys from your top top guys, but um, it, it could very well kind of eliminate some of that clutter and, and you know, have us go with our first instinct more. Well, you kind of moved away from 10 personnel the last 12 games of the season last year, but in acquiring DeAndre, do you think that gives you the opportunity to use more of that personnel scheme this coming season whenever it begins? We're not afraid to, to roll it out there, but, you know, Scott, I think the first month, it's what we felt comfortable with, with our quarterback spreading things out, being in those open sets where you could see and, and operate um, at a level we we felt what gave us the best chance to win. And um, But we're going to adapt to our personnel. I felt like we did a better job of that as a staff moving forward. And um, whoever we, we have on our roster now, we'll adapt to that and put the best four guys out there that we can put out there. Cliff, with the, with the way this draft is going to be conducted, how important – are a team's IT guys, and I just in your instance, have you had to make major adjustments at home to kind of get ready for it? Yeah, they're going to be vital. I mean, they they always are. I think they're they're behind the scenes most of the time. They're a little bit more out in the limelight now with how the draft's going to go and how much we're depending on them. But those guys always do a tremendous job for us in film and getting us set up technology wise. My house, I'm just watching it, you know, on one of my TVs. I got the cowboy clicker. I'm able to operate just as if I was in my office. And so they're huge, and, and they've done a tremendous job, but they always do for us. This is Howard Balzer from SI.com, Cliff. Um, on, on DeAndre, could you take us back to when you first found out that this might be able to happen and then your reaction when it actually did? Yeah, it, you know, it all happened pretty quickly. Uh, I, Steve called me down to his office and said we had something in the works, and um, they worked through it and, and got it done. And um, like I said earlier, I don't want to get too far into it because it's not official yet, but obviously a tremendous player has been great, has been healthy, played at a high level for a long time, and uh, so we're all excited about it. With, uh, with the potential of, of losing maybe all of the off season. Where do you think that puts Kyler? I mean, obviously he had a chance to play all last season, so that helps, but I'm sure you were looking forward to getting him on, on the field another off season and kind of pushing him ahead. We definitely were, but yeah, you all saw the development, I think, throughout the season, the comfort level. Um, we'd love to have him back and, and be more hands-on for a couple more months prior to giving him a break and then training camp, but uh, everybody's facing the same challenges, and, and I know Kyler's working really hard. He's chomping the bit to get back. He has the film to watch. He has the stuff to study. He knows what we got to get better at. And um, so I, I expect him to take a, a big step, just understanding the, the game more. This is the NFL, the type of proper preparation it takes to be that guy week in and week out. And so, um, yeah, we'd love to have him back. Do I think it's going to stun his growth? I don't think so. I think he's, he's figured out kind of what he has to do, and I expect him to take a big step.
Cliff, do you anticipate Jordan Phillips playing defensive end for you guys in your 3-4? We think he's versatile enough to, to play anywhere, in, you know, the one, the three, the five. And that's – DJ had him in Miami um, previously and, and just talks about Ray Bell's athleticism, being versatile in all those positions. So he's a guy that, that we targeted um, and, you know, uh, free agency, had him rated really high and, and felt very fortunate to, to um, add him to that defensive line room. Hey Cliff, based on experience, on defense, what will they what will they add to that side of the ball, and how will they all complement Chandler Jones? Uh, can you repeat that, Josh? I, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. there's three guys you added on defense. What will they do to that unit, that side of the ball, and how will they all complement Chandler Jones and vice versa? That that's a big part of what we were trying to do. I think you look at Kennard, um, very solid, tough, high character player. Um, you know, has has had production in the sack department, but really physical in the run game as well. And um, it just you, you can't focus all your attention on on Chandler now with him and, and Jordan. And then um, Campbell's a guy that we played against last year at Atlanta. Thought he did a tremendous job covering tight ends down the seam, covering anybody that, that they try to run routes on him. He's a tremendous guy in, in the past game. And so to be able to hit all three of those guys was huge. And I uh, mentioned it earlier, to go into the draft and not feel like you have any glaring holes on your starting defense, it, it definitely takes some pressure off. Hey, Clay, this is uh, – or, um, I know this is this whole thing has affected all of our livelihoods and you know people's um, jobs, you know as well. And I just I'm just wondering from a football perspective, how have you talked to the guys and what, is, what has been your message to the team, um, just just mentally coping with all of this, knowing that you know there are bigger problems. But you know I know it's just football. But um, how have you got talked to the guys about it? Yeah, I think, like I said earlier, it's just perspective. I mean, you have people risking their lives every day and we're kind of sitting back and just waiting and we wouldn't have had the players here for two more weeks anyways. And, and so up to this point, nothing has really changed. Guys are doing our off season. They're having to lay low a little bit more, but um, we all feel very blessed that uh, we have people like that out there that are, that are looking out for us and taking care of us. And, and I, I think that's been the biggest message just keep things in perspective during this time. Hey Cliff, based on the uh, experience you had starting a rookie quarterback last year and the compressed, off season, how challenging will it be for any team taking a first round quarter or a quarterback to play that quarterback as a starter early in a in the rookie year this year? Yeah, I think Ed, that's kind of the million dollar question. But when you look at how um, coaches have, have kind of handled that in the recent uh, you know top picks with quarterbacks, they've done a nice job of, of kind of building it around that guy. And I think the ones that are able to play to one of those young quarterbacks strengths and what he's comfortable with early are, are going to have success still. I mean, these guys, if you're going to the top 10 picks, you're a sharp QB and, and um, you played a lot of football. And, and so uh, I, I think you'd like to have them, but these guys, it'll probably force them even more to, to build it around things they did well in college and are comfortable with. And um, so that could be a benefit at the end of the day. Cliff, with you uh, kind of being, I'm sure, stuck at home yourself, I, I, there's plenty of draft stuff you've got to deal with and guys that you're scouting do you find yourself with any extra time to come up with different offensive ideas I mean do you do you, do you have extra time for that that you're putting even more into like going down that rabbit hole of coming up with ideas and schemes and stuff yeah it's definitely allowed me to, to dive into a lot of the college game more I think I, I've always tried to study some of those top offenses guys that I had a ton of respect for and like the way they they operated um, but it's really allowed me to, to watch a lot more of that and, and there's a lot of great minds at that level and um, so it's definitely a deeper dive into into offensive football this this offseason no question with all the downtime Hey Cliff, Kevin Zimmerman here from Arizona Sports. I'm just wondering, I know the draft could obviously there could be tackles there, but the two guys that you guys have coming back in Justin Murray and uh, Marcus Gilbert, how do you feel about them um, if they're the two guys that are competing for that spot? And then I guess, is Marcus all good as far as his injury? We feel really good. Um, Marcus, prior to his injury last year, we thought was, you know, the best lineman we had as far as how he'd been playing uh, up to that, that week of the season. Uh, tremendous leader veteran has played at a high high level for a long time and want him back fully healthy and then see what he's got and then couldn't be more impressed with with Murray and what he did I mean we got him here on a Tuesday he played that Sunday and then started every game moving forward I think um and battled his tail off and I think it would just be that much better so uh two guys that, that we feel good about however it shakes out uh, over there at the right tackle so you brought Kenyon back. You brought Kenyon back, and you have Chase Edmonds, obviously. But DJ's been kind of hurt a lot. Is running back an area you'd like to add some depth in when it comes to the draft? 
We're really excited about those two guys, uh, Kenyon and Chase. When Chase had his opportunity, he was phenomenal, and you, we all saw what Kenyon did. So two explosive backs um, played at a very high level and had their opportunity. But um, that third spot, we'll see. You mentioned it. DJ was was banged up last year. We think he he um, has a good skill set, but that, that's an area that we'd like to have three. You saw we got to a third one this year. We'd like to have three that we feel like we could roll through and, and not lose much. Seth, going off that, what do you think Kenyon can do just in a second year with the team building off of last year? Yeah, Catherine, I think he's going to have a, a higher level of confidence, no doubt. Just the understanding of the system, understanding how we coach, what's expected of him. I mean, he did a lot of that on the fly. Um, you see the explosiveness. You see what he can do in space. And, and we have to continue to do a great job of putting him in a situation to be successful. But I just think his overall uh, knowledge of the system, comfort level and, and the system and even – living conditions and all those things that help you be a better pro, um, he should be a lot more comfortable next season. So coaches are always all about winning, but what's your reaction to the three Cardinals being named to the all-decade team uh, yesterday? Yeah, awesome. I mean, first-class individuals, very excited for those guys, and, and they've earned it. I mean, both all three have played at an insane level for a long time and um, all well-deserving as, as players and people. Cliff, coming from college, Oh, go, ahead. go ahead, Catherine. <laughs> Thanks. Um, coming from college and kind of already embracing technology more than maybe some other NFL coaches, do you feel you have any advantage there as everyone's trying to adapt really quickly to this? Um, I, I don't know. I don't think so. I think this, I mean, the Zoom, this is the first time I, I had seen it was kind of this year. So FaceTiming, I mean, I'm used to FaceTiming, but most of the time I'm trying to sell those kids to come to Texas Tech. And obviously that didn't work out as much as I would like. So um, for me, it hasn't changed a ton. Um, but I, I think the technology is is pretty amazing right now. And like I said earlier, I don't think it, it affects um, too many processes that anybody's trying to do right now in the NFL. Cliff, what are you most looking forward to year two? I mean, you have one year NFL coach under your belt. Um, you got Kyler back for your two. You mentioned some other pieces, some new pieces you have for your team. What are you most looking forward to in uh, your second year, Cliff? Yeah, just to see what type of progression we can make with, with the continuity and coaching and scheme. Um, some of the players we brought in, like you said, year two of a quarterback who, who has a lot of confidence playing in, in his second season. I just I want to see a lot of progression and, and be better than we were. There's a lot of areas when you go back and you do the self-scout, we got to get, get a lot better at. And um, so it'll be fun to kind of run it back with that group and, and see where we're at. Cliff, I hear a lot of coaches uh, talk about staying in a routine, really a lot of people in general staying in their normal routine. Are you doing that as well as far as what you'd be doing this time of year, getting up at the same time, you know, doing your same amount of work during the day? I am. I'm trying to keep it consistent. I mean, there's a, a little more time in the day to, you know, move around, go for a jog, do different things like that. But um, for the most part, try to keep the time schedule, waking up, same time, getting done at the same time. So when this does clear, you know, you're ready to go. Hey, Cliff, are, are you worried about the upcoming season or do you try not to let your mind go there? Like, are, are you a worrier to like that or, or do you? No, I, I'm, I'm, I try to be, you know, glass half full and um, I have – you know, no grasp of the severity of the situation, honestly, as far as leaders of our country do and different medical people, things of that nature. I'm, I'm not privy to that information, but um, I, I hope we do. I think it'd be a great um, diversion for everybody if we can, we can get on the season, but obviously that, that remains to be seen. We talked to Jordan Phillips yesterday about how, you know, he and his fiance just gave birth eight days ago. So many guys have big picture things happening outside of football right now. What are those conversations like? Yeah, I mean, once again, just just perspective. Those, those guys, I think, are starting to understand um, just how fortunate we are because you could be at home without a job and, and with your kids. And I mean, there's just a lot of things that our country's going through or, you know, being on the front line each and every day that we don't have to go through. And so just perspective of be appreciative of what we have and when this thing passes, we'll be ready to go. How different has this off season been for you compared to last off season when you were still new in the whole process? Yeah, night and day. Um, last year was just all about installing processes and, and getting things in and, and um, doing the best you could with that. And now it's about, hey, what did we do good? What did we do bad? What can we get better at? And, and being able to tweak all those processes and try to improve them. And uh, so it's been a lot of fun um, seeing year two, what we 
feel like we can improve upon and what we need to cut out and then go from there. And um, so we'll see how it all plays out. What for you personally, are you more comfortable, obviously? I mean, like the whole idea of just getting settled, like what's, what's that? Like? Yeah, I think on a personal level, definitely. Um, you know, for the first eight months, I was in a hotel and just living at the office, basically, and um, been able to kind of get settled in and understand where this thing is going and, and what it takes to, to get where you want to go. We have great coaches on our staff that have really helped me kind of see where we need to take this thing. And so from an overall perspective, just feel a lot more settled than uh than last year cliff what's your netflix recommendation these days i mean ozark three was really good knocked that out in about a night but i'm on the all or nothing manchester city on amazon prime which is really good if you like soccer at all it's a really good one well once we get the other uh, netflix Everybody, be, everybody has to adjust we'll do, one, to, we'll do one more, okay? This will be the last one, if you don't mind. Sorry. Uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, everybody has to adjust, as you said, uh, to whatever this new regimen winds up being on draft day. But what apparently won't happen is you won't have every, your scouts and your coaches all in there uh, making group decisions when you're on the clock. Everybody's going to be isolated in their own place. How does that change the um, – dynamics for Steve do you think in terms of making that final and informed decision yeah I don't think it'll change much I, I honestly haven't talked with him I think he he's kind of welcoming um the solitude of it all you know that's a big day and there's a lot of voices that can get in your head and a lot of clutter that can go on if you're not careful so I, I know he's excited um to just have the process streamlined and and we'll be in constant communication as well the scouts and, and Michael and um, so I, I don't think it'll affect much. I, I think if anything, it, it will be good for him and uh, really allow him to have a clear, clear picture and a clear thought process.